Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode 135 of the the Motor Racing Podcast. I hope you are well. Hello, Cameron. How's it going? Hello. I'm good. How are you? I am very good. It's just us two today. It is. <laughs> it's musical it's chairs, boys. man. Yeah. yeah, Lauren's like, I can't come on for the next few ones, and we're like, Bro. Since when? <laughs> Finding herself again. Just getting that last 1%. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. It's just, yeah, she's, she was nearly there. And then she realized, she did a few episodes of me, realized she needs to go and find herself a bit more. <laughs> just, she was like, Jesus Christ, this <laughs> guy. I haven't quite <laughs> found myself, to deal sorry. With him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. dear. But we'll see her in a few weeks, I guess. But yeah. Yes, yeah, so we are back after a banger of the motor gp race weekend yes it um shaky start with moto three but mm-hmm. it came through it came through it did oh yeah yeah so i just really badly whacked the bat on my foot are you okay on the corner of my chair oh i'm in agony <laughs> bloody hell <laughs> oh that's gonna bruise. well folks that's it dex gone it was a ploy by me. I am now your main <laughs> podcast host. Oh, God. <laughs> Ow. Oh, dear. Actually, as new commander of this podcast, I just want to give a quick shout out to my friends. Dad oh, yeah. lives in Hinkley. My friend Emma's dad, Andy. Thanks for listening to the podcast. So I just thought I'd get that out of the way as Aww. new leader of the podcast host. You're Isn't a legend. Sweet? Yeah. Nice. Cool. Carry on. Does this wholesome. Hinkley. Is that like Hinkley, Bristol Hinkley or? Um, Triumph Hinkley, as far as I'm aware. I don't oh, know. yeah, that one. Sick. Nice. Yeah. That, nice that, place. As far as I'm aware, anyway. Yeah. Nice. Carry on. <laughs> You're anyway, back. Recovered. Uh, I am back. I'm, I'm in pain, but we're going to buy it down and carry on. Yeah. So, yeah, we had a very good MotoGP weekend. I thoroughly enjoyed all the racing. And I was thinking about this earlier. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering on your opinion, really, because I'm of the opinion that it's a bit better this year than the last few years since, I don't know, about 2019. And I don't know why. <laughs> There's almost like some common denominator there. I see what you're getting at. Well, I mean, it's, it's you know, the rants that I've had in like the past two or three episodes about it um, this year finally living up to hype because there are some mm. certain names that are... Um, back at the forefront but you're right this particular common denominator of of with with a 93 on the bike I, I yeah get what, i get what you're you're putting down um yeah robin's racing and we got some robin we got some racing and if it we weren't did. for marquez this weekend it would have been a pretty a boring race show. it would yeah it would have been peco show would have and been a boring race like obviously we talk about marquez a lot because yeah. everybody talks about marquez a lot but he adds something to the races. I think that's mm-hmm. hard to deny. He adds something. We've seen the last few years when he's not been fighting at the front. Now he's fighting at the front, and suddenly you're seeing Ped. I was going to say Pedro Costa, Bagnaya, Francesco Bagnaya, absolutely just become some absolute demon. Yes, and just battle with Mark heavier than we've ever seen. And this is... They're like the tire marks on the back of Mark's arm. Yeah, ridiculous. Mental. What a photo. What a photo. <laughs> but this is it. We've, you know, Peko at Jerez has kind of become like Fabio at Jerez from, from you know, maybe three years ago mm. and before. Like, untouchable, really. And Peko has that kind of status now with his record at Jerez. He's kind of untouchable. Marquez comes back, gives him a race, and I think... Was it last week or the week before we were saying how Peko has kind of had it all his own way a little bit too much. He hasn't had too much competition. And we actually, yeah. we think it's maybe just this combination of the bike really suiting the rider and he's not had to ride around many problems. And when there were indications of that, he couldn't really stomach it. Mm. I think Peko did himself so much justice this weekend to say, like, this is why I'm a champion. I I. I can ride like a champion should ride. It's not all been handed to him. Um, you know, this was just... It was 1-0 Peko this weekend. I mm-hmm. hope we see many more bouts like this throughout the weekend. <clears throat> Obviously, with everybody finishing races and, and no crashes and injuries, etc. Um, 
But it was like shades of 2021 Aragon, wasn't it? I was thinking that, yeah, with neither of them wanting to let the other one win. Yep, they couldn't do it. it was 2021 Marquez was on the Honda, um, which maybe wasn't quite at the deficit it is now, but um, it was his track. He was back from inju- in injury temporarily, really had something to prove, and it, it, it kind of had that again, that sort of atmosphere of like this champion v champion thing on near enough equal machinery. And... Would Martin have added much to this battle? Do you think he could have kept that pace for the entire race like they did? No, because Martin's like a Jorge Lorenzo in the terms of the fact where he'll just pull away. And that's mm. not a bad thing. Jorge Lorenzo, as we saw over the years, had some insane battles with Marquez yeah. at Mugello 2016, for example. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That was so good. Um, mm. Obviously, Rossi back in Mategi in 2010, and then obviously... What does it call it? Like no, Catalonia as well. It was both, <clears throat> yep, both of the and a nine, sorry. But and then plenty of battles. Phillip Island twenty fifteen. You know, there's plenty of battles of Jorge Lorenzo in there, but when Lorenzo wanted to go, he stop. would mm-hmm. go. And Martin is like that. I think Martin can battle. We saw it Thailand last year, Martin could battle. But I think he'd probably wanted to play it safe and he's not mm. put foot wrong all year long yep. until the race on Sunday when he crashed out of a pretty convincing lead, I would say. Yeah, I mean, this is it. It was, um, obviously, it's a shame for Martin to have made Mm. this mistake, but it's great for the championship as a spectator. Oh, yeah. Closes things up. It gives, you know, it it hands one back to Peko and Marquez where they've DNF'd and Martin's, like, cleared off and and taken maximum points. Sorry if my voice sounds a little bit weird. I feel like I've got something just stuck in my throat a little bit, but we'll carry on. peanut theory. It's (laughs) probably, yeah. (coughs) Oh, my goodness. I've got residual peanut in my throat. Peanut dust. Peanut dust. I don't know. It's it's only MSG or something. But, um, yeah, it's good for the championship to have seen... (coughs) Oh, my goodness. To have seen this kind (laughs) of... It closed up again, and I think it really showed us where everybody's at as well. And it was, it was kind of, um, it was weird to see Acosta disappoint so much and not be there at all. In my, I mean, obviously, what was it? A top ten? Did he get in the main race? I believe so. I'll just triple check. He got tenth. Yeah. Yeah. So great for a rookie. But had it not been for the first three rounds, we're kind of like, <laughs> oh, what's happened to Acosta? <laughs> like, this is where he should be. <laughs> yeah, and Vinales. Yeah, so, I, there Vinales, were, there were, classic Vinales. Well, exactly, that's yeah. it. There was there was something kind of slightly cagey about the track conditions, and then that's it, Vinales is nope. Uh, yeah, oh, I'm not goodness. doing it today. Yeah, yeah, but like, there were maybe sort of two or three riders that could have been up in this battle that we had that weren't. Um... So don't get me wrong, we had an amazing race, but it could have been could have been more. Mm, but um, I do think it would have come down to Peko and Mark because yeah. both of them wanted Mark is one of that first win in the home crowd. Peko was like, I've already won two here, let's go three in a row. Yeah, and exactly. Peko also seeing Martin go down means that he's gonna be fighting more to try and claw that back. Because it's only seventeen points between them now. I mean, that's that's scrubbed in one weekend. If Martin gets another DNF Mm-hmm, that's it. Like done. The, yeah, exactly. And it can happen. Le Mans yeah. next, right? Again. Mm-hmm. Often... Tricky conditions. Yep. What is it? 130 crashes we normally see at Le Mans. Is it? And Around that, yeah. <laughs> it, it's, you know, those with the most extreme riding styles can quite often find themselves on the deck at these, mm. in these kind of conditions. So, you know, it can close back up. I think, to be honest, Peko and Marquez are actually the most consistent there. Yeah, They've just they had are. a bit of bad luck. Well, um, yeah. I worked out earlier, like, obviously there's ifs and buts, and what if my grandma yeah. had wheels, she would have been a bike. All that. But <laughs> if Marquez had not have crashed in the sprint and then had won Cota, mm-hmm. he'd be leading the championship right now. And similarly, if they'd, at Portimao, if they hadn't taken each other out, yeah, it I would think Peko would be closer. Yeah. 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 They, yeah, exactly. Marquez may have been a comfortable championship lead at that point, which just shows 
how consistent he's been when he finishes, obviously. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, he's taken solid points. He took away 18 out of 37 in Qatar, then nine points in both the sprint at Portimao and the USA. Mm-hmm. Four, and then 24 points at Jerez after a crash out of P1 in the sprint. Yeah, yeah. This like, is it. If it just got some battles going on. I, I think we do. Um, and I think Marquez has the potential, barring bad luck, to be probably one of the most consistent riders on there. Yeah. Similarly with Peko. Mm-hmm. And, but then Martin's been pretty much flawless so far. So I think it really is a three-horse race. For, for now, the title. yeah. For now, Which is yeah. mad, because mm-hmm. Marcus is sick from the championship and we're saying it's a three-horse race. I know, I know, <laughs> I know, that's it. But we can only go off what, we can, what, we what can we've see. seen so far. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. in terms of consistently fast... And consistently at the front. Yeah, and persistently at the front. Not necessarily finishing every race, but, no. you know, that's not... That's, sometimes there's not a lot you can do about that, as we've seen. No. We had two um, errors that weren't his fault because he crashed on a damp patch and then the front brake messed up at Kota. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's several points worth right there. Um, yeah, just for, for a little bit of luck to befall him and Peko, then it's on. It's on with those two. It's a long championship. Sure. It is a long championship. Because we're going to... Are we going to Kazakhstan this year? Yeah, we got or... Le Mans, Catalonia, Mugello, then Kazakhstan. Wow, Okay. And then we've got India. We're going to are we going to Aragon this year as well? Yes, and I yeah. cannot wait. A left hander. Marquez will win at Germany and Aragon. I'm putting my money on it. He should by then. It should be he should be a pretty clear favourite for those ones. Mm. It was KG because it was still early in the season. Yeah, he, he could have. Something. He could have won yeah. it. But you you'd hope that by mid season on his tracks, he's uh, he's got those kind of tied up, but. We'll see. Yeah, we will see indeed. I mean, yeah, it was a very good race weekend. And that overtake from Pekka by Naya, wow. <laughs> they were on the outside. Oh, God, yeah, the yeah, one, yeah. double overtake. The one he tried to do at Thailand last year that didn't come off, but then came off this time. I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. No, Could me neither. Could not believe it. I, just, it's these little genius sparks that set people apart. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was something else. And the fact that he just he just <laughs> slotted it around the outside, brought it in the apex, and that was it from what, like that fourth to second or something? Fourth to second, yeah. yeah. Around the outside, on the brakes. Of people who are good on the brakes. Yes. So. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, that was that was ridiculous stuff. Like Yeah. Ha- well, yeah. Like I was saying, you know, ha- hats off to Peckle. It was really a proper... Proper battle. Proper battle. Properly showed his stuff. Yeah. This weekend, and I think also he, you could tell he's he's had Valentino as a mentor, because Valentino mm. has always said like you need to get Marquez back immediately, instantly, the next corner. You can't let him settle down in front of you because then it's over. And you could, mm. and he did that. He did exactly that. So fair play. Mm. Fair play. Yeah, and. So move on to other things in the race weekend. Mm. <laughs> Before we speak about the main wild card, it's been announced that Cal Crutchlow will have three wild cards this year at Silverstone, Mugello, nice. and Mazzano. Amazing. That, like, it's about time. You know what I mean? He feels so underutilized as a test rider. Mm. He, they need to get him out there doing a bit more, in my opinion. And it's great that he'll be doing so on like live race weekends at Silverstone yes. no less of course that had to be yeah, Silverstone British but... Grand Prix of course yeah perfect yeah. which I'm quite excited for actually because I think he could do I mean it's a Yamaha so it's not going to be like the best thing ever but they did do some testing today and they've got a new fairing on Alex Windsor's bike which yeah. looks promising but yeah three wild cards good data obviously what they're testing now Cal will continue to test, and then at the at Mugello, for example, we'll see him on a well on a bike that's a hybrid of whatever they've been testing, really. Yeah, some other spaceship. Mm. How many how many wild cards are they allowed with the concessions? So the concessions have changed. Yeah. So let's have a look. I cannot remember. I don't want to give 
false. You don't want to give false information? I know. Goodness Crazy. me. What? 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 But as Vase very nicely told me that it cannot post my tweet, which is great. <laughs> but I tried to tweet it an hour ago. Oh, <laughs> X. Thanks for that, Twitter. <laughs> Someone get Musk on the phone. Yeah. So, wild cards, they get six at. So, Yamaha and Honda will get Honda. six. Yeah. So, they get yeah. six. Mm -hmm. They're using three. Um. So far, yes. Okay. They've committed to using three. I'm going to say, if they. If, they only use the three of the six that are allowed. Like, what's the point in that? Mm, but I mean, if they got more in store, okay, sure. Because KTM have confirmed two, which is Danny and um, Paul. Danny and Paul. Yeah, I believe Ducati aren't allowed them at all because apparently from this wildcard zero, if you get eighty-five percent of the points or more. Sure, makes sense to me. But it doesn't it doesn't tell me which. Teams are under which bracket, which How doesn't do help. Oh, here we go. Right. So, thanks, Crash.net. <laughs> the Ducati have the ranking of A. So, Ducati okay. get zero wild cards. So, Michele Piro is not to be utilized this year. He's not Aprilia, making his yearly, yearly Mizano yeah, appointment. No. Sadly not. No. He's actually been quite good, like getting to Q2 and stuff. Yeah, yeah. KTM and Aprilia are rank C, uh -huh. so they both get six wild cards each. All right. And then Han Honda and Yamaha are rank D, so they get to use both their riders normally during private testing, contest at any circuit, six wild cards, and they can upgrade their engines as they like and get two aero updates, but they must discard a previous aero specification. Right. Well, you know, if it um, if it makes the racing closer, I'm all for it. Yeah, me it too. makes sense in in theory and for my little small brain. I'm like, sure, sounds good. Let's do it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to complain. And I mean, it'd be nice to see Cal on the bike, just as it was nice to see Danny Pedrosa stand on that sprint race podium. <laughs> oh, got it for Fabio, but oh yeah, <laughs> if there was anyone I would want to inherit that podium position this weekend. Danny Pedroza. It was Daniel Pedroza. The legend. Yeah. Quite literally a legend. Genuinely. Gen and like the audacity of Fabio to sign a medal for Danny Pedroza. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny that he did that. Yeah. I hated that. It was. It was, it was funny. Stuff, like for you, Danny, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. And they I gave mean, him like his nice little podium ceremony as well. Listen, if you, if you finish that sprint race, you almost deserve to be on the podium. So, mm -hmm. like... Yeah, that was absolutely wild. The amount of riders crashing out. Because what was it? It was Marquez, Alex, Binder, and Bastianini in the same corner. And I was like, yeah. this is Shades of Le Mans in Motor 3 the other year. Yeah, yeah. Because they all just went one after the other. One after yeah, the other. It was not like, like in successive laps. Here? Just sort of happened. Um, yeah, and then Marquez went down. Then Mignola's went down. I was like, 14 riders crashed. That's wild. More than half mm -hmm. the field, right? Oh, yeah. Some of them yeah. obviously remounted and stuff. Mm. And then Marcus crashed at P1 and then absolutely... I don't know what he was doing, but he just dinked Mir off the track as well. Yeah, he, did. he almost had, he had to have that ref moment, didn't he? Yeah, he's like, Marquez crashed, all right, brain fade time. <laughs> yeah, there was there was, there was was absolutely no, no need. He, he wouldn't even have to try to mm. take Mir on that Honda, but why he had to do that, I don't know. No, but... The main talking point of it, I think, was Pekka by Naya crashing out. That was an interesting crash. I can't picture it. Remind me. When Pekka... Oh, oh, when he got sandwiched. Was actually, yeah, mm. and Binder, and they sandwiched him, really. And I think it was Binder's fault, I would say. I've not really scrutinised the accident, It's a racing incident. Honest. Yeah, I know but, pretty much everything's been... This weekend has been deemed a... Yeah, because it was right? like, yeah, because Bez was on the outside. Pekka was just behind Bez on the inside. And then Binder sent it up the, between the two of them and closed the gap between him and Bezzecchi. Yeah, yeah. Squeezing by Naya out it's and not off gonna the work. track, off the yeah. bike. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it was a nasty one, that, mm. to be honest. Um, like I say, I didn't really, didn't really analyse it, I'll be honest. I watched the sprint highlights because I was doing stuff on Saturday. But, um, yeah, mm. it was, again, it's just more of this sort of bad luck that seems to be befalling the likes of Marquez and Banyaya in these first few rounds. But it's maybe... Maybe starting to turn around. We'll see. But these things, they just they, they happen, don't they? It's the nature of riding two That's wheel, racing, 300 force pa- 300 horsepower. Wow. 300 horsepower machines round a go-kart track this weekend. Really. Yeah, that's it. I mean, these things happen. And sometimes it is just a racing incident. There was a lot of crashes that are a bit kind of dodgy, maybe. Like Alation Zarco. Yeah, that Frankie was and Mil- desperate. Those two. Frankie should have been Frankie yeah. should have been penalised because what the hell was that? <laughs> I think so. But both those crashes you mentioned, the elation, Zarko, uh, Zarko, and and Frankie and, and and Miller were just just kind of they were both into turn five, right? Just sort of desperate mm. torpedoes up the inside. Yeah, yeah. Didn't um, like them. Did not like them. No, and then Zarko hilariously went and told Freddie Spencer he's not. Fit for his job. <laughs> wow. Okay. I, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, because Freddie Spencer refused to penalise anybody for it. Mm. And Zarko basically was like, you're not fit for your job and got removed from race direction because of it. Whoa. Go on, Zarko. Yeah, Let him know how off. you really feel. Love it. Yeah, and Alicia's back in Zarko, to be fair, which is quite hilarious. Even though he's the one that nerfed him. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So I was Fair. like, okay, geez, oh. Zarko must have made some very good points. Yeah, he must be very convincing. Yeah. In, in his French accent. Mm-hmm. The, um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one, that. Well, if there's one thing, Alicia's not. It's a hypocrite, it seems. Mm-hmm. That is true. That is true. But, yeah, the main race was very, very good. Ducati just seemed to be dominating it as always as well with a one yeah. to first of five. Would have been first to six, really, if Martin hadn't crashed. True. Um, which is silly, to be honest. Yeah, this is the thing with Martin, though, because last year he kind of did it so much that he lost the championship. You look at Indonesia mm. last year when he had a very convincing lead and just stacked it. Yep. He held the championship for about 20, what was it, 23 hours and 51 seconds or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Something like that. 23 hours, 59 minutes and 21 seconds. Something stupid like that. Uh, yeah, it's... Because um, he, he, he really had the opportunity this weekend to get a pretty convincing... Obviously, it's still early, but like to yeah. actually get like quite a good hold of the championship. he had a massive lead already, didn't he? Yeah. And he could he, really have pushed it. You're still like 30 points clear or something, right? Yeah. Maybe not quite, but it, it was double digits... And he could yeah. have, he could have grown that potentially. Although we mm. have discussed Marquez and Peco might have been on another level, but we'll never know because Martin binned it. Mm-hmm. He at least could have got sixteen points. I would say he had third all day, if not first or second. Um, yeah. So, but instead he he walked away with nothing, um, which is a shame. But like we said, it just makes the spectator side of this championship that bit more so much better. spicy. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to see how it unfolds over the next few rounds because yeah, I can't really pick who I want for the championship because Acosta hadn't had the best race weekend. But I think that was maybe a fluke. You know, he's also never really raced on mixed conditions and it was quite dodgy, the track. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So... A tenth place is actually pretty solid for a rookie. Very solid. Very, very We're solid. Just used yep. to just absolute carnage from him going and doing things that we shouldn't be doing. So I think the yeah, exactly. the kind of the level with him is just the expectations there now, I guess. I know. That's it. And places like Hareth are maybe a bit more of a leveler as well, because everybody, it doesn't matter where they're from, everybody mm. on the grid now has spun hundreds of thousands of laps of this track. It doesn't matter. Yeah. If it's your backyard or not, or if it's in a way race where people are a little bit less confident, everybody knows Hareth like the back of their hand. So it's a bit more of a leveler. It, all the manufacturers have so much data for the track. So it's now 
less about, shall we say, natural, raw, intuitive speed like we've maybe seen it the last few rounds with Acosta. Yeah, because I said it on a podcast of the week that we'd see more of like a of where they're all at when we get to her ref because mm. the the Europe the tracks in like Portimao in America not Portimao Qatar for example in America can often bring up fluky results and obviously yeah. Portimao wasn't a fluke but those few tracks before her ref are always a bit strange yeah yeah they are they're never they're hard to predict you can't you can't go in knowing what's going to happen for sure no you can't and that's not to discount pedro pedro costa either because i think he'll be back there at le mans provided the weather's good enough that he Mm -hmm. can feel confident Mm -hmm. in the rain and stuff like that but i think that's where he should be though like yes it wasn't even a bad weekend for him it's just because of the precedent that's now been set by him it's like, oh, okay, yep, you are um, well, you are still only a rookie in your fourth race. <laughs> well, can you imagine if last year Augusta Fernandez got 10th at her F? Mm. Would you be, I'd be like, like, man, wow. this kid's special. This kid's yeah. really only got... only got 4th at Le Mans. Yeah, yeah, exactly. got 4th at Le Mans. Mm. We all thought, man, he's really cut out for the paddock. And then this rookie comes in and is getting podiums in his first few races. Like, it's really changed the... <laughs> Changed the bar of what we expect from a rookie now, unfortunately. Mark and Marquez was at fault for that a few years ago. I think. Yes, yeah, I think so. I think so. Mm. Um, and speaking of Augusto as well, it's it's really not looking it's too looking hot for terrible, him, sadly. Isn't it? Yeah. Where did he finish in the main race? Did he, he didn't finish ah oh, because of a clutch issue, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, his clutch broke in the race, which is a shame, but. He's not really been doing what we expect of him this year. No, we were expecting these sort of top 10s that Acosta just got, I think. Um, maybe not top KTM. Mm. I, I, in all honesty, I thought maybe he'd be outperforming Miller, at least. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if he's even doing that, is he? So Miller is 14 for the championship with 22 points. Mm. Fernandez is 17th of 10. Right. Gosh. Mm. Yeah, no, I think I think it, it's safe to say that second season or no, um, he is he is slightly disappointing. Acosta's teammate regard you know, it doesn't out of the picture. Doesn't matter. Um it's just not quite what we want from him. But hey, sometimes you can just click a set and like Digia did last year and it'll all come together. Who yeah, knows? exactly, and you just don't know. But I don't really see anyone who can replace him either. So, uh, that's a good point. <laughs> um, <laughs> Maybe I wouldn't. I'd say Raúl Fernández or Miguel Lovera, but neither of them will want to go back to a gas gas. No, if Joe yeah, Roberts true. steps up into a track house. Oh yeah. Uh, Blooming Eck. Yeah, good point. Good point. I guess we shall see. Mm-hmm. That's all we can do, I think. But, yeah, Motor 2, heading into Motor 2. Mm. Joe Roberts is now the championship leader after three podiums in a row. He did by five points and is now the first American to lead a championship since Nicky Hayden in 2006. With 69 points as well. Yeah, which is which is nice. But also, it's nice. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, freedom units, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is a kilometre? <laughs> what is a kilometre? If you haven't seen everything Motor Racing's post about that, Yeah, you that went everywhere. Out. I was like, what the hell? That is... That is <laughs> yeah, that, that post just oozed freedom. America. Yeah. <laughs> freedom of It really scale. did. <laughs> Great yeah, stuff. But... Great great to see. And I think the fact that he's he's backed himself up at Hareth, like we were saying, we've been at the flyaways, can get weird results. The fact he's backed himself at Hareth, like, man, that's proper. He's quick. He's quick this yeah. year. He's up for the title. Let's go, Joe. It's mad because it feels like he's been around forever. Yeah, I, feels... <laughs> I remember when he was a 17-year-old kid in the Motor 2 Junior World Championship. And he's now in his, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh full season. 
Really? Yeah, it's like yeah. feeling feeling Sam Losey. Isn't Seventeen. It? Maths was wrong. Yeah, nineteen. Sorry, but yeah, like it's taken him a while to get here. Sure has, but very long time. He did have a tough year on the NTS, yeah. tough year on the KTM, and then look what happens. So when you give riders a chance, exactly to stay in after joining up from a national championship. Yeah, looking at you, American racing, <clears throat> and yeah, and and you know those with maybe superbike experience mm-hmm. uh, on Pirelli's, for example, it can really change things. But hey, yeah. there we go. Listen, considering how good Roberts and Ramirez are, <sighs> say what you will. It's a business at the end of the day, isn't it? It is. And they got good results. Um, as and, livid yeah. as that makes my haggis at the corner. But <laughs> yeah. there we are. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Now, yes, it's taken a few years, seven years, but he's there. He's leading the championship. And now it's about backing up and getting on that track house Aprilia, which yep. would be a current spec bike as well, because Ralph Fernandez tested the 24 bike today. Oh, yeah. At Jerez, and mm-hmm. we'll be riding it from Mugello. So he'll get a current spec bike next year, provided that they continue with that and not just keep the 24s. Joe Roberts, we all thought, I think, when he said no to Aprilia a few years ago, we were like, you're an idiot, mate. That's what it. the hell are you doing? Mm-hmm. That was an opportunity of a lifetime. You'll never get that again. And he might just get that opportunity again. And you know what? He'll have earned it. Yep. In the find it, and the, the, I'm pretty sure I used this joke last week, the week before. You know, the stars and stripes have aligned. Nice to give him that, to give him that opportunity. You know. Yeah, no token Americans around here, sunshine. Absolutely not. He's fully deserving so far of a MotoGP seat that is owned by an American team. Yeah, it's perfect. let's be honest. It's absolutely he's in an American team right now. You can, you, there's literally, you know, and it's not like there can be any argument of, oh, Oliveira and Fernandez are doing really well. They might not want to get rid of them. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> you just, yeah, there's none of that. There's none of that awkward politics, thankfully, yet. I mean, who knows? Mm. They might, that might change. But I think, like, to be honest, this weekend, there may have been some kind of pen to paper. Who knows? Maybe a pre-contract time. Possibly. Possibly. And maybe if he's still... Yeah, and if he's still maybe leading the championship by, say, Aragon, that's oh, yeah. when it's like, we'll give you it. We'll, you can have the ride if you're leading the championship by Aragon still. Yeah, then you've just got to figure out what to do with Raul and Oliveira. I keep Raul because I think, believe he's on a 2.2. 2 plus 2 champion. Okay. 2 plus 2 contract. So yeah. he's still got two more years. So... Mm. He's probably the best bet of him and Oliveira. Oliveira's touching 30 now. Yeah, yeah. Oliveira should be making it work more than he is as well, unfortunately. Yeah, because we, we all expect him to hop on that brilliant and just smash it. Yeah, I thought, and I'm sure people may quote me who have been long-time listeners, I thought he was really going to do the business. Same, same. And Aprilia, and it's sure he had some bad luck last year with injury, mm. but I don't know. What's it to be now, huh? Yeah, and so... But most of two was pretty good. Fermin Aldegar's back. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we Thank get back God. to Europe, and then these these fast Spanish kids suddenly start stomping everyone again. Who'd have thought? Yeah, I should have crazy. thought. Crazy. Yeah. Like you look at the top ten in Moto Two, right? And they're all Spaniards, barring Joe Roberts, Ayagura, and Vietti. I I, I didn't even know Vietti <laughs> was top ten. That's wild. That's ninth. Yeah. Ugh. That's crazy. The, I mean, the Moto Two field in general, though, is pretty s- Spanish heavy right now, isn't it? Oh yeah, Spanish and Italian heavy. Because then you go to eleventh and the Spanish, Barry Baltas and twelfth, and you got Italian Thai, Italian down to fifteenth. So yeah. yeah, there's a lot of Italian Spaniards and the same in Moto Three, but that's just how it rolls, isn't it? It is. It is. But yeah, so Moto Two was very good. Aaron Canet, though. The broken ankle. Ah, not mm. what we want. Not what we want, especially since no. I predicted him. That's why. Yeah, true. That is true. And I mean, I don't think he'll fight for the championship again. 
He's won that race, and it's kind of like, and we were like, oh, yeah, they'll start cup rolling in now. And, you know, this the hopes of a MotoGP ride are slipping out of his fingers. I sadly would have to agree, because he wasn't, you know, even before his um, accident this weekend. Mm. When was it he crashed? Um, FP something or other. Yeah. He was in free practice, I'm sure of that. Either, I mean, he didn't start strong before the accident, though, did he? He didn't no. come in thinking, oh, he's a favourite for pole or the race or anything. Yeah. Um, it, it could have clicked, but yeah, no, nah, it's. I think you're right. And now with an injury and with Farman seeming to find some form again. Um, mm-hmm. psh- yeah. Tall order. Yeah, massively tall order. And. I think another guy who will go to MotoGP is Ayagura with that third place Nakagami. <laughs> yeah, finally. He's been, we hope. It's, it's almost like he's being forced, being like, no, that you've held off long enough. You have to. You have to know. Nakagami to can't take now. it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've shipped you off to another team to try yeah. and win this title. You're still not doing it. <laughs> Just go and ride MotoGP, please. Just come on. Yeah. Mm. Oh, dear. I wouldn't mm, want but, if I mean if I were a guru, I wouldn't want to be on that Honda, but no, I wouldn't be anywhere else. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I'd be holding out for the twenty twenty seven rule changes, but at are. that point, like you might be too old, and then you got the results, and then yeah, it's, oh, it's tricky. Exactly, it's I a think tricky game. You should just go. Why not? Like, yeah, at least it's a pretty bike. The mm. Edimitsu. Yeah, his Honda. boots look really nice as well, the blue and black on them. Yeah. So, just do it, Agurna. Who knows? He might come in and do an Acosta. Hey, you never know. You never yeah, know. You never know. Yeah, and then moving to Moto 3, David Alonso. What the hell was that, bro? Ah, uh, just... Crash out of P1. Yeah, giving it too many beans. Jorge Martin too vibes, soon. you know? Yeah, exactly. That's it, Jorge Martin vibes. I was gutted for his teammate, Joel Esteban, though. Crashing at fourth. He's a rookie in his fourth race. Oh, wow. That would have been an amazing result for Joel, but he also Definitely. crashed on the last lap of the last corner. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, because Alonso was on another level. He didn't need to push that hard. He was that on early. fire the whole weekend. Every session, P1. He was in sessions by a full second. Yeah. He just, he, he made everybody look stupid. stupid. Uh, yeah. And then ultimately... The joke was, was on him. Stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. hey, these things happen. I'm sure he'll come back at Le Mans, etc. But, yeah. yeah they'd, he'd been the easiest 25 points of his life there, I think. And the fact that he fought back to get five points and finishing 11th, though, yeah. is mental. That's so impressive. But he was overtaking riders and getting past them with ease as well. It wasn't even hard for him. Yeah, it's like a video game, honestly. Mm, honestly. But I'm very happy to see that Holgado also didn't really max out his points and yeah. because it means it's still close between the two of them. Like The gap is still 28 points to third, Colin Vaya, which oh, is unbelievable. <laughs> At least Vaya really made the most of it. Yeah, Vaya went from, what, 21 points to 46 in the championship and shot up the order. That's that's the way it goes. You got to capitalize the, or, on these yeah, things. Exactly. If anyone made the most of it, it was Colin Vaya. Oh, definitely. Well, I guess you would have said that out of whoever won the race, I suppose. But like we say, you know, we don't we don't wish for you know people to be crashing out and having accidents mm. or whatever. But from a spectator's point of view, yeah, it's made the it's, it's breathed just a little bit more life into this championship again. Yeah, Moto3 is a crazy one, though, because you have the top two running away of it. Via with 46, then Otolo and Kelso on 39 points, Munoz 38, then you've got Pekeras, Yamanaka and Nepro on 26. So it's very, very close at the top in Moto3, for third. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah it's like it's in these like pockets. Speaking of Pekeras, though, mm-hmm. disappointed. A little bit, I'm honest. because... Yeah, in fact, with Leopard was... in general as well. Yeah, I'm kind of gutted for um, Roeda, though. The only points he scored this year have been his Portimao podium. Um, 
I'm going to give him a pass on the surgery. Yeah, he's had surgery, which is... I'm disappointed for him. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not disappointed sure. of him. Mm. I'm disappointed for him because he deserved a lot better than what he's been given this year, I think. Yeah, definitely. And and th- these things, you know, it's a fairly like innocuous surgery, getting your appendix removed. It didn't like burst or anything. He wasn't on the verge of death. Did it burst? No. He no. wasn't like, you know, in really any like serious um, condition. And it's a pretty routine surgery, very low risk. Like he, he's fine by all intents and purposes. But mm. these things can just knock your confidence or like kind of change your headspace a little bit. And you know, it's um, it is a shame that it's 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 it had this kind of effect on what would a weekend that he would have been a favourite for for sure. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Absolutely. Mm, so hopefully. You can you can turn that horse around, you know. Yeah, but I think the ride of the race for me was Colin Vire because he oh. had an absolutely spectacular race. He rode the championship off that bike. <laughs> yeah, flawless, <laughs> like it, that flawless was, ride, really. Yeah, outstanding. And yeah. even though Tola's been so consistent recently as well, that I'm actually he's definitely a contender for it. I think at the moment, but I'm intrigued as well. Tyro Tyro for Sato. Podium in his first race hasn't had a podium or even a point since. Yep, I I don't know. Well, Qatar is one of the tracks that they go to in the Asia Talent Cup, isn't it? Yeah, where he like wiped the floor with everyone, and it's mm. it's maybe just a case of he's still not quite got that um, experience on like shall I say the Western Hemisphere? You know? Yeah, um, maybe. I think he's been racing it a few years now. Yeah, he has, he has, but it's still not going to be anything like the laps that these Spanish kids have around her. Yeah. Um, additionally, what was the top Honda this weekend? Top Honda was, let's have a look, Moto3 race. Right, it would have been Adrian Fernandez in sixth. Oh, okay, right. <laughs> tenth, but that is Leopard, non Leopard. Batella and Almanza in 14th and 15th. Mm. I think overall, though, it still was. It seems like this was a KTM track. Yeah, every track's KTM track. Well, really, yeah. But like, it, it can be closer, I think, at a lot of tracks, um, particularly with the Leopards. You know, they got that cheat code, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it was ineffective this weekend. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's a bit of that. There's a bit of he's he's just maybe not quite got the the data the experience and everything for yeah for these like proper classic European tracks as well like Jerez. Yeah, that's true. And he's he's not eighteen. He's still learning. Really, he's just oh yeah, man. yeah. I th- I think to be honest, he he's in line for the Edimitsu Honda in, in Moto Two. In no, I I think in Moto GP eventually. Jesus. <laughs> eventually, I'm you know I'm thinking yeah. like maybe six years from now, possibly yeah. more. Twenty thirty. Well, that is six years from now. Good True. God! I've just realised twenty thirty is six years ago, yeah. six years from now. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, like he's good. He just he's not quite got that, um. That extra little bit to be to be with the front runners at the European tracks yet, mm. but I think give him time and he'll get out there. He's shown speed. Yeah. Oh yeah, get him on a layer pod and he'd be a beast. <laughs> oh, that's an interesting proposition. Mm. Mm. I'm intrigued to see actually how silly season goes because even though Tola wants a motor two seat, deserved. Yeah, I think he'd end up in MSI to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I think but so. But then, where would would I go go to Mr. GP? Would Sergio Garcia switch teams? Mm, I, I can see Garcia ending up on an IO bike if he... Yeah. You know, if he keeps this up. Um, yeah, me too, to be fair, because they are so bad at Moto2 at the moment. Like, Oh, God, yeah. Forgive yeah, on yeah. shoe, he's a rookie, but Vietti, man, what the hell? <laughs> we knew it was the wrong call. We said it. We said mm. it last year when we knew it was happening. We're like, what are they doing? This does not. We had too too much faith in uh, Aki Ayo picking his riders here. Yeah. To be honest, um, these 
results of Vietti's were not warranting the the top. The, the top they won the championship riding. last three years. Yeah, exactly. They, they weren't warranting that bike. Now, if you're given it, and they're showing that it it wasn't the bike, it's the rider, no. sadly. Yeah, it's it's weird because he's got the talent. We can tell he's got talent. We've seen it. Yeah, when it so works. What, what the hell's he doing? <laughs> I don't know, mate. He's just... He's an enigma. He's an enigma. He's just not delivering. Sadly. No. Yeah, which is a shame. Yeah. Should we go on to predictions? Oh, go on then. Yes. So, if you don't know predictions, we take all the results from the weekend after predicting where we think the riders will finish before and give ourselves points out of it. Basically, is how it goes. And I, this year, because last year it was a bit chaotic, <laughs> um, basically just used the normal Grand Prix format for points now. So Makes sense, right? Yes, but I do give points for pole position. So you get 12 points for a sprint win, then 16 for P3, 20 points for P2, 25 for P1, if you can correctly predict that one. 10 points for pole, and then if you get all three in the podium, you get 75. All correct, include pole, 100 points. And you have to get the rider in their specific slot. Yeah. So, heading into this race weekend, Cameron led with 143. Did myself I? With a, yes, myself with 117. So quite a big lead. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. <gasps> oh my goodness. Lauren with 79 and Tyson with 10. Wow. Yeah. So, in Moto3, it was David Alonso that got pole position. I went for Alonso. So did Lauren. Cameron went Helgado, Tyson, Rueda. So, me and Lauren get 10 points each. Here we go. The fall from grace. (laughs) In Moto2, Aldeguer got pole. And I went for Canet, Cameron Lopez, Lauren Garcia, Tyson Gonzalez. The zero points. In the race, it was Aldeguer, Roberts, and Gonzalez. Third place, I went with Gonzalez, Cameron Roberts, Lauren oh. Ramirez, and Tyson Lopez. In P2, oh me and Cameron and Tyson went Garcia, Lauren Canet. And then to win, I went Roberts, Cameron went Canet, and Lauren and Tyson went Aldi Gare. Did they? Wow. You and me are now tied on points, by the way. <laughs> 143 each. Ah. Oh. So, what in MotoGP, Mark Marquez got pole position. Oh, yeah, we didn't even talk about Marquez getting pole. That was yeah. wild, wasn't it? It was wild. Mixed conditions. He didn't even know. He just, yeah, like he, he just stopped at the side the of the track and looked up and was like, yeah. oh, I've got pole. Listen, mixed conditions. That's when these experienced heads really come into their own. Oh, yes. So, me and Tyson went Martin pole. You went Acosta and Lauren Vinales. Zero points. Ugh. In the sprint... I went Martin, who uh. also won the sprint. Cam went by Naya. Lauren went Marquez. Tyson went Binder. In the main race, it went by Naya. Marquez Bezecchi. I went Acosta, Mark, Vinales. Ah. Uh. Cameron went Mark, Acosta, Vinales. Ah. Uh. Lauren went Acosta, Martin, Vinales. And Tyson went Marquez, Binder, Acosta. So you get 20 points. Plus the 12 for Plus the sprint the race. Ah. Uh. God. So, Leaving her F, I now so lead smug. with 175. <laughs> For 117 to 175. Cameron stays on 143. Wait. Lauren, you scored zero points. No, wait. Wait, <laughs> you just said we were tied on 143 points. Yes. And then you got 12. 32. You got 32, which is 175. Okay, continue. Thank you. Right. Lauren is now at 114. Oh, Good. Tyson's on 51. Blimey heck. So I absolutely bombed that weekend. Yeah, you did. I got that nothing. horrendous. That was disgusting. That was just shocking in all degrees. Jeez. Uh, I really martined it. Mm-hmm. There we are. Yeah, you did martine it. That's a good one, actually. <laughs> mm-hmm. No offence, Martin. Happens to the best of us. No, yes. But... Yeah, it was a very good weekend. I think it was a weird one, though. I think because it... all three, all three 
classes were a bit strange. Yeah. Nothing really happened to what we'd expect, as we saw from the results just there. I mean, Danny Pedroza on a sprint podium. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're here, replacing Fabio. Like, yeah. what? And then Fabio couldn't get anywhere near it on the main race. Mm. It was, what, 16 or something like that? Yeah, this was his stomping ground a few years ago. It's mental. He I was still untouchable here. 15th he was, yeah. I still am questioning why on earth he chose to say Yamaha, barring money, obviously. It, like, uh, how many years has he signed? Two more years. Two more years. Doing uh, that. Uh, the, I mean, listen, these things take time. Mm-hmm. And in my opinion, there is no way that Honda or Yamaha are going to be able to get to the sort of Ducati level of things mm. under the current regs. No. It's going to take a rule change, a la 2027, for things to possibly have like a major switch up in terms of these manufacturers and, and who's good at what. Um, so I, I, I don't know. But like Mark Marquez says, like Fabio's got time. He's still young. He is, yeah. He can still have this um, incredible story arc of of you know taking Yamaha out of the doldrums. Yeah. Um, but I don't think they're gonna develop their way out of that under the current regs. I think it's yeah. gonna. It is definitely gonna have to wait until twenty twenty seven. Yeah, but, that is. And it's it's just bizarre to me. <laughs> I know. I know. That's it. But then no one's ever offered me. 12 million euros. That's it. You can't, like... Although, <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, that's mental. Like, why are you saving for the money? It's like, it's 12 million euros, man. <laughs> it's a lot of money. And his career's not going to end no, after 2026. He's, He'll he's, still he's, have stuff to do. Yeah. He's always got that residual world champion thing that you yeah. mentioned last week. Like, they're always going to have that higher stock value, as they yeah. say, than... A counterpart who has had similar results for the last few years, you know, you'd pick the world champion championship holder over mm-hmm. someone who hasn't. Um, so you know, he's banking twelve million. There's not really much pressure on a Yamaha rider to be delivering results right now. Nope. Um, kind of makes sense. He can go out there. He can try different bits and bobs. Maybe like work on his skills as a as someone who develops a bike as well, not just someone who rides it to win it. Um, and, you know, laugh at us from yeah. his yacht. Yeah. You know? You know, scumbag. <laughs> yeah. We can pass all the judgment that we want. I'm sure yeah. the wax coating or the ceramic coating on his boat does not care about the words we have to say. They will slide mm-hmm. right off that. Yes, Absolutely. And if that ain't poetry, I don't know what is. That is very poetic, Cameron. Well done. Mm. <laughs> Another thing, though. <laughs> Danny Pedroza and Lorenzo's boxing match. Oh, God. <laughs> like. I was like, what the hell's going on? I just, you know, this whole celebrity boxing thing that's happening. It just feels so tacky and cheap and I mm. hate it. And I just, I hate the two legends of our sport, like I saw it from Lorenzo like you know if it was Lorenzo and Cal Crutchlow yeah Cal Crutchlow yeah that would be amazing I mean yeah Lorenzo (laughs) would be done like I would absolutely (laughs) not um, square up to Cal he's got those eyes you know what I mean yeah the eyes are like I'll kill you he'll disembowel you and not think yeah Um, but like Pedroza's just got this like air of class about him I did not see coming but Hey, it's for charity. It's not just for some like stupid big money purse Influence and everything. Thing. Like, fine. It just, it just, it's gone out. It just, uh, uh, yeah. feels yeah. kind of cringy to me anyway. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Have you seen a lot of people saying that Marcus's dancing was quite cringy as well on the race <laughs> after the race? It was it, so funny. <laughs> it, you know, I, he's just. He's just loving he's it. Just, he's, he's, he's just enjoying himself. Exactly, because he knows that possibly five years from now he's not going to be on the grid. Possibly, yeah. you know, with his age and he's just he's 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 realised 
he's been in that position where not many riders get to, where like they realize what they've lost, yeah. and then it's come back again. He's like, this is amazing, and I know it's temporary, and I'm gonna savor it. Mm. Like, if if Fabio ends up back at the sharp end again, he's probably gonna be the same because he's gonna be like this. I missed this. Like, oh, you know? This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, but like, yeah, it did. It did look like some kind of weird AI. To be yeah, <laughs> like he's on the podium, but then it's like, is that Marcus? Or someone just put a suit on. Yeah, what is happening here? <laughs> and he yeah. took the helmet off and was just laughing at off, and I'm like, okay, yeah, it's Marcus. fair. Whatever. Yeah, like, enjoy it. Exactly. I think. People are too serious. We talk about MotoGP being too serious these days and stuff. And like, I think just having somebody in that can just not care too much about themselves, what yeah. people think of them, and just do some stupid little dance moves and do whatever. Like, what is he doing? He's doing the same at the um, Coco Sprint, <laughs> wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. I think it's possibly a side effect of everything he's been through over the last couple of yeah. years as well. He's realized, you know what? There's bigger things to worry about than looking a bit daft. Yeah, and exactly. I'm just going to enjoy myself. You're just going to dance. Yeah, maybe we should all learn to dance like Marquez, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, we should. I mean, he's 31 as well, which is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he could be a dad quite easily. He could, and he's dancing like that. So well, has, fair yeah, play to him. Maybe, that, maybe he's prepping. He's, he's getting yeah. ready for with a bit of dad, dad dancing. dancing. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? It happened to Did Valentino. It. it could happen to Marquez. It could indeed. It yeah. could indeed. Yeah, he was at the races, Rossi, wasn't he? <laughs> he was. He was, which made he's, it just it added that little extra bit of spice. He's bigging up Pedro Costa. Was he? I didn't. I didn't see this. Yeah, no. he said some good stuff about Pedro, saying how good he is. And then did you see uh, Bangnaya blank him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that was not intentional. Um, no. And he was like, oh, come on, come on. And then Pekka's just like, nope. Nope. Yeah, busy, busy. See you later, bro. See you later, bro. But did see a few posts today because what's his, his uh, paddock pass still has the photo of him when he was out of bl- dyed blonde hair back in like 96. <laughs> That's <laughs> still his paddock pass photo. Love it. Love yeah. it. Wow. It was great. I still love it. It must have been like 28 years and he's still got the same photo. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, I mean, mm. there, there, there'd be no denying it's him, though. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's, there's not yeah, really any, any risk of misidentification with Valentino Rossi, but there we are. Yeah, you kind of know what he's doing. And he got <laughs> a podium, didn't he, the other day in the GT Challenge? Uh, yes, yeah, still still doing bits is all Rossi. Mm. And they're using him for marketing, much like Dorna did. Like, I saw a poster the other day for the race that's coming up in that championship, a GT race, and it had... Who did it have? It had... Mick Schumacher, oh, another, I think it was Jivanazzi, XF1 driver, and then it had Valentino Rossi centre stage, and I was like, you know what you're doing. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that just, is it. That's how, you, that's how you do the marketing. It must have, mm-hmm. been, must have been pretty trippy for Valentino, though, to be watching his number one protege, Peco, yeah. getting put under the kind of shit pressure <laughs> that, that, that he knows all too well from what yeah. Marka has been like oh my god like I can't believe I've subjected this young man to this yeah, so how is sorry, he still Pecco. doing this how is he still yeah. doing this all these years later how has he come back and is still being an absolute pitbull on the track but yeah you just know they had a chat afterwards and was like yeah he's still the same oh, he's, he's still <laughs> he's still at it yeah yeah mm-hmm. but Wild. yeah now that the time has ticked over an hour, I think that's all we've got time for. <laughs> I think so. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep rambling about utter nonsense. Yeah, and we don't want that. We want we more don't. listeners, not less. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I don't know. The fact they've made it this far suggests they're here for life, you know. we got lifers. Hell yeah, if you're yeah. still here. <laughs> you're a legend. I love you. Um, <laughs> Dex says that yes. very easily, so don't take it too yeah. personally. No, I do. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. But yeah, I, uh, thank you for listening to this podcast anyway. And I guess we'll be back next time. Yeah. Bye. With the Le Mans preview. Oh, yeah. Remember I used to call it Le Mans? 
Lamans. I don't remember. I probably suppressed uh, the memory. Jacob went mental at me for it once, and I haven't called it like it since. So. Lemans. Lemans. Well. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much. See you later. Goodbye. Bye.